Hey team, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with a donation deck list from Paul around Punishing Maverick and where we kind of see the deck coming for Eternal. Hey team, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with a donation deck list from Paul around Punishing Maverick and where we kind of see the deck coming for Eternal Weekend. Uh, so Paul is obviously uh, a fan of Maverick and wants to take the deck to a competitive event. And right now, I think that if you're looking at Maverick, the Red Splash is probably worth it. Uh, a big card here that is missing from MTGO is Morlock, which was printed in the 40k uh, supplemental set, but um, we can't do too much about that. I would probably play at least one main one side. I think that card's really good as a Green Sun's target, but for now we're going to focus on the list online and see how it goes. This list is very close to what I've been tinkering around with with Punishing Mav. Uh, because it does have a, a few things here that you don't often see in Maverick compared to something like Naya Depths. Uh, the first one being Sylvan Safekeeper. Safekeeper is really nice in the deck as a way to protect Collect Oof and uh, Gaddock Teague uh, and other sort of Hay Bearish creatures uh, without adding in the full three or four slots from other runes. It's also uh, Green Sunnable, which is really nice. You can find it pretty often. Uh, and generally it's just a great late game kind of lock piece uh, to make sure your opponents can't deal with maybe like a big knight uh, or even something like a Ramanap if you have like a wasteland strategy online. Punishing Fire is pretty tough, especially with the new mono white deck. There's a lot of three powered spell, uh, a lot of three toughness creatures, but I still like the, uh, just the longevity it gives the deck. Uh, it's also just great removal against something like a turn one mum, uh, an early delve or a DRC uh, obviously having the reach as well is quite nice for planeswalkers, but yeah, it's uh, it's in a tough spot. Um, I did want to try out Maverick with something like Bolts, but, but uh, that would be pretty interesting. The Mono White list is kind of the new White Stompy initiative list. Uh, I believe it took down the challenge in the hands of PVDH on the weekend, uh, and it's been putting up a fair bit of results. I think part of that, as a few people have said, is that it's quite hard to play against if you haven't played against the, the initiative before. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool deck. Um, this is obviously running Fable or the Mirror Broker as well, which I really like. I think it's pretty nice in this deck that is wanting to use a lot of your mana every turn. Uh, you can make copies of, of things like Knight, uh, which is pretty awesome. Not just to swing for a bunch of damage, but also to get uh, you know extra utility lands if you want in a turn. Uh, it also allows you to hopefully turn dead cards into relevant cards. And by that I mean uh, doing something like uh, discarding Punishing Fire to find Gaddock Teague or Collector Oof against combo, or against a fair deck getting rid of Collector Oof or Gaddock Teague uh, to find removal. Um, also just as a turn two play is really nice. Uh, it allows us to maybe grow a knight out of nowhere. Um, or even put things into the yard that we just don't find relevant and want to try to dig for something uh, like those hay bears. Um, not too much else to say. You can see that the main deck is fairly well uh, established against the fair deck. So a lot of the sideboard is for combo and blue decks. Uh, Mountain is a card that you don't often see, but I've been a big fan of it against the wasteland decks where you really want red. Things like death and taxes. Uh, with the full four blasts against Blue Red Delver, to have a non-wastelandable red source is pretty awesome, uh, and something that I've really liked. You can only fetch it with the Wooded Foothills, but uh, I still think that's fine, because you obviously still have the Taiga and the Plateau to fetch. But, yeah, I think if anything, uh, it might be worth keeping an eye on the amount of three drops in the deck, especially with the Fables. Um and how many mana dogs we currently have. So we're currently running two nobles, one ignoble hierarch, uh, which I really like in this deck as an extra red source, uh, one birds of paradise, and then one dried arbor. I think in the past I've been running something like a two, two, two split. So I've been running up to seven mana dogs if you include dried arbor. But uh, obviously if you cut to find kind of the 
level ground where you're happy to have it, especially with Once Upon a Time, uh, you can obviously make more room in the deck for cards. Uh, a card you won't see in the 75 is Thalia, which is a little bit too taxing on yourself in a version like this, uh, which is one of the reasons why I like the Galactic in the main deck, is just another way to fight against some of the blue combo decks, uh, alongside maybe something like Collector Uf or, or Scavenging Ooze. Um, I, I have seen Thali in the sideboard, which actually I currently run in paper, but I'm not sure how impactful Thalia is against the decks that she's good against post-board, because she is a turn to play at best. Your opponent's probably already bringing in creature hate, uh, which is why I really like something like Deafening Silence, which is a turn one play. It's an enchantment. Uh, so it's really only bounce spells that you're worrying about. Uh, so Thalia is a little bit awkward. Um, so I've actually just gone with a sideboard here that Paul's gone with. This is actually his uh, straight version. So uh, something exactly that I would play. Uh, very close to it because I love a lot of the zero and one drop interaction in the sideboard, like Deafening Silence, Pyroblast, Mindbreak Trap, Surgical. Um, that's really it. We were going to talk about uh, Night of Autumn as well, and like when you like Night of Autumn over Outland Liberator. Night of Autumn is just an easier two for one. It's harder to cast through Blood Moon. Um, Outland Liberator obviously just gets you value over time if it does flip, but it is a little bit tough to be able to flip it against the games that you really want. Like casting no spells is a pretty huge cost for a deck that is typically sorcery speed. So unless you have like maybe Punishing Fire or Swords of Plowshares up against a deck like eight cast, and you can just pass and, and get there. It does take some time and there is a cost to setting up the extra value of Outland Liberator, but when it flips it, it it's it's great. Um, there's also a few pros and cons with show and tell, which I don't think you'll be seeing too much online or at Eternal Weekend. Um, one thing to note about Eternal Weekend online, which I believe um, is the Asian Eternal Weekend potentially, is that there will be no god accounts. So the decks playing in the Eternal Weekend Legacy event will be decks that people own. So I think it'll actually be a lot closer to the showcases, the challenges, those sort of metagames that we've seen before uh, than previous Eternal Weekend online events. Because, um, actually maybe not. Maybe that, you know, although people can borrow decks and god accounts, there is probably the argument that the decks that have done well in the past are probably players who own the deck online. So might not change as much when it comes to the top eight, but it will probably change what you play against in... Actually, I'm back and forth on this now. <laughs> uh, yes, I would definitely play Morlock uh, in paper. I've got one in the main deck and one in the sideboard, and I've been really enjoying it. It's really, really cool. The, the biggest advantage it's given me is locally against death and taxes being able to play a turn one mana accelerant and my opponent goes with turn one mother of runes to be able to untap in green suns for an answer and an answer that also comes with a 2-2 body is just so good because it means i don't have an awkward spot where if i don't have removal that turn that mum is most likely going to be a two for one so pretty happy with that uh, no script ranger either because we're not playing mother of runes. I don't think I think that's kind of like the the probably the the big cutting point where script just isn't as good without mum. Yeah, safe keeper's been been pretty strong, so we'll see how this goes. A big thank you to Paul. A big thank you to Card Hoarder who allows me to borrow these cards and sponsors of the channel, and a huge shout out to Entergy Mate who is an Australian online reseller of Magic singles and sponsors this stream uh we will use play points we will enter the league we will get a gameplay nice bring this down a bit perfect but yeah it's definitely a shame that there's not more online eternal weekend events this year i don't think i'll be able to play in the one that is um scheduled but all the best to those who are playing in them. Very cool to see them coming back to paper. Obviously, it would have been nice to get a little bit more um, notice about them, but that just happens. And of course, the Maverick Joe. 
one of the channel's uh, biggest supporters for sure. Uh, and this is a pretty, pretty nice hand. So what do we have? We have four lands. Uh, one is kind of a spell land. We have acceleration. Uh, the collective could be dead, but I don't, I don't mind this hand. Like as a six, I'd be pretty happy to keep it without the collective oof. So well, let's go with that. Hey Quay, thanks for the follow. Hope you're well. And I think I will fetch straight away, but. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely disappointing for a lot of Eternal players who, when you look at Eternal, you're probably looking at an older bracket, so you, you're looking at people who probably need a, a bit of time to set up for a big event like Eternal Weekend. Uh, you know what? Let's go with Forest. Um, the only reason not to go on Forest is that if we draw like a... It actually doesn't matter. Like, if we drew like a Source of Plashes or Wasteland, we couldn't like double spell next turn, but... I think Forest Ignoble here is fine. If you have Mother of Runes in your deck, you might want to go something like uh, Savannah into Manadork, because then if you like top deck a Wasteland or Mum or, or some variant, then you could definitely see a, uh, a situation where you could double spell on turn two, but it's not relevant here. And again, this is like a great place for Morlock. Like just to be able to take out the Manadork and have a creature on board is, is really, really nice. Um... Playing the oof doesn't affect us, so I think here we're just going to probably play the fetch because I do want to get knight down next turn. Go for Savannah and just cast oof and attack for one. I think other than Punishing Maverick, green-white with a light black splash appeals to me. Black mainly for Plague Engineer on the board, uh, and Grist in the main deck. Obviously for Prismatic Ending as well, but I think Grist is a really, really nice way to attack the metagame. Especially for the, the grindy decks. Thali's a little bit tough here because it does tax out double Green Sun's hand. But at least we can attack through it with Collector Oof here. So it looks like Joe is also going to be on Punishing Mav. Hmm. So I can Green Suns for two here, which isn't great. Let's have a quick look at our deck. Hmm. So I probably don't want to play the the canopy here just because the uh the mana over time and damage is gonna hurt us. And we do want to get this green suns for I'm gonna assume knight is probably where I wanna be. So hmm. I haven't played any initiative cards in Maverick, but it would be pretty interesting to see. Hmm. I think I actually might go canopy no i don't want to expose the canopy to wasteland i was going to play canopy and then green suns for th uh for one which would cost three to get another exalted creature but i think here i'm just happy to attack with the oof play a land and pass most likely the plains just because if my opponent does have wasteland i don't lose either the grove or the canopy I could also preemptively Green Suns here, but I think I'm happy just to pass with, with Mana Up. Because I don't think right now I'm in a position where I'm going to die with these Green Suns stuck in hand. I guess if I really wanted to, I could have Green Sun for Safekeeper this turn. 
and then next turn have the knight that is pretty much untouchable but this uh this thali is going to be hitting hard two three four five six yikes Yeah. Caracas here would be a... It, it's tough. Like, I have to keep the Collector Ufnail back as just a random blocker, most likely. Hmm. Still pretty happy to go for Knight. They do have two cards in hand, which I can only assume one is removal, but there's not too much I can do about that. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I think it is still going to be Knight. Very cool to see uh, Joe trying out Punishing Maverick. I know that he's been playing around with uh, Fleetwood Dancer, I think it's called. It's a 4-drop that has like Haste, Flying, Lifelink, I believe, maybe Trample? Oh, Bolt? Oof. That's a yikes. Just got to get a... That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, we have to just jump lock here. A lot of mana for my opponent, but not too much else, which is quite nice for us. Cradle. Hmm. Uh, I don't want a Sword Thalia here. I kind of just want to draw a card and see what we draw into. And then potentially next turn we can... Okay, that's not too bad. If I play like this, we can hold up Sword this way as well. Also plays around Bolt a little bit. See how my opponent wants to attack. The Legion War Boss, yikes. Uh, I'm keeping the sword because I want a sword in response to the exalted triggers. Otherwise they can just attack with everything, which I assume. Yeah, so this is, quite, this is a little bit awkward because I don't really want to spend a sword on the goblin, but it's going to be a 5-5 five five here. I think I actually just take this. Swords the war boss. And then try to go from there. But war, war boss is, uh, is pretty spicy. One card left in my opponent's hand as well, so we can eat Oof and Knight here as well. Ah, uh, no, white mana. Apologies, apologies. Yeah, sorry, I thought I was holding up white, but of course, uh, the Ignoble Hierarch is not a, a Noble Hierarch. I just uh, tapped incorrectly and could have kept. I could have kept up the Savannah instead, but that's uh, that's on me.
But yeah, that really comes down to just not having too much experience uh, with playing. Uh, let's go with Knight. I could untap if I was really worried about Bolt and then have multiple green sources up, but I think this is okay. Fable is interesting. But I'm nearly in a position where I need to... One, two, three, four, five... Potentially even like Green Suns for Ramanap and then just get Dried Arbor back. As like a blocker. And then use that each turn. If I Fable I get a 2-2. Two, two. Isn't that great? Knight does give me access to Caracas, which is a clean answer to the Thalia, but... I think that's going to be the play. We're at 10, so I don't think we're... I guess, like, Fleetwood is lethal straight away, but... Like, they have to have that. Uh, if we cast Fable first, we then get an extra mana off the token, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think we tap like this, play Fable, and then hold up Cradle. Three, four, which would be green suns for two. Not that relevant. So I think holding up sword and then double activation is potentially where we want to be. Knight's pretty good. Don't really care about the Knight outside of Wasteland here. Um, so I'm pretty happy to see how they attack if it is just with the one. Okay. Just gonna take it. The knight's a little bit scary because I'm not too sure what their targets are. But I think I just want to get rid of the the war boss. Which is a little bit rough because I could have done it at the uh end of that first main phase so they didn't get an extra token but not too much I can do about that so really just a sequencing error there um, I don't think it's worth eating the bolt Hmm. I think I'm happy to drop one green suns here. Library. Okay. Um, okay, what if we go for ramen up first? So, one, two, three, four, five. Get 
get back windswept heath. And just hope this is enough. We also have a, a green and red blocker, so like maybe like a, a one-off Sejiri step in the deck won't do anything, which is nice. They most likely draw straight away off the canopy, seeing they have so much mana. Okay, another knight isn't too bad. One, two, three, four mana left. I guess they can wasteland the dried arbor before blocks. That's something to note. I'm going to take out the Cradle now. Okay, well now we get a chance to actually block with Dried Arbor. Unless they're doing something else. Endurance. Us. Okay. Just going to get Dried Arbor. block. Hmm. Uh, I think what I want to do here... So if I, if I really wanted to, I could Punishing Fire a creature. I don't want to eat my Dried Arbor to try to gain an extra card, but I, I think here we just want to have a look. Okay, don't really need any of these. Do I need this? That's the big question. I guess there's no, I guess there is a little point of going to one. Fable flips here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have one, two, three, four, five, and then Punishing Fire. Yeah, it was actually too late anyway to um, be able to get it back. Hey, PV. Uh, this is... Punishing versus Punishing Mav, but theirs is a little bit different with uh, threats like Legion, uh, Warboss, and Lightning Bolt, which is pretty sweet. We can also get to a stage where we can Punishing Fire the Knight, which is pretty sweet. Because we can eat all their lands. 
They actually played the planes as well, out of hand, so actually dealing with all information on board, which is quite nice. So I have mana up to Punishing Fire and Return. And I probably just want to start going after their mana dorks. If I go after the Thalia, they might try to save it with Caracas. So I just want to be efficient with my mana. Okay, well this actually makes it pretty easy as well. Because we just get a punching fight with it all on the stack. And now we get to return the gain of life and then eat the noble hierarch. Which also allows us to buy another card next turn if we really want to. Hmm. Holding up the endurance is pretty nice. It also means we don't have to hold up mana to actually eat the land. So I don't mind putting the land on top. One, two, three, return. That is another red source though. But I th think here I'm happy to put this on top. And then actually just see if they use both their... Knights on their turn. I can also start using the Reflection of the Kiki Jiki to start making copies. So they're going to go after the Grove here, so what we want to do is go... 1, 2, 3... Punishing Fire Knight to mark 2 damage on it and then cast Endurance to target them. We'll then make the Knight a 2-2 two -two, which will die to state base actions. Uh, yeah, if I kill the untapped one, it's similar. Like, I assume they still just use it. Um, being an end step, there's not too much of a difference because they can still do exactly what they just did. So better. Okay. I think here we're just chumping with the goblin token. Still have one card. We also get to get the Grove back with the Ramen app, which is quite nice, which allows us to get back the Punishing Fire as well. Let's 
get back to the grove. Um, one, two, three. I am going to make a copy of Ooze and attack with it. Oh, I should have actually eaten before this all happened. Yeah. Oh, it's just a tutu. Well, that's kind of cool to know. I didn't actually know that would... I guess that makes sense, actually, to just become a tutu. Uh, but that is fine, because I still get to attack. And then if they do block with something... Then I might be able to kill... Especially the knight. Okay. isn't too bad because now I get to return punishing fire and then kill the endurance Interesting, they didn't use Knight there to get Wasteland. I thought they might have tried to Wasteland us off the Triad Arbor. Ooze has really kept us in this game. Ooze is just ongoing hate and life gain compared to Endurance has been really, really good this, this game. No attacks, all right. Well, that's pretty huge. All right, we still know two lands on top. <laughs> on top and on top. Layer fetch land. Uh, I'm actually just going to pass here and hold up Reflections for my next turn. <laughs> that's, a, that's a solid dig. I'll, I'll take that. Still land up the top. Alright. Let's eat. Actually, return. Take a... Mm -hmm. Let's start going after. Uh, I could have actually hit the knight and then... Because I'm going to endurance anyway, so I get a free endurance here. But I don't really want to endurance them because I want to... Yeah, I... I'm actually... I should have eaten stuff because I, I want to endurance here, but... I don't really want to hit them... I also don't mind just copying Noble Tyrock here then. Because it gains haste, right? So I get extra copies. So I kind of get an extra green source. Okay, now this works out. That's pretty cool. Alright, fresh cards on top. Second Grove is really nice. Alright, let's go return. And then... One, two, three... Punishing Fire Knight. Nice. Now let's... Create a copy. Um, what if we go eat this first? They then fetch. And 
No, they're going to suck. Oh, but now I can just kill the knight. Pretty much. I don't want to see what they get because they can just get another fetch. Hmm. All right, let's use Kiki here. I guess I could have kept Wasteland and in this spot Wasteland of the Fetchland to then make them crack and then Endurance them. Oh, okay. So many little things I, I could be doing here, but obviously time is a necessity. You guys are a necessity. Canopy, okay. All right, let's attack with the endurance copy. I guess I can kind of attack with both of them, which is an extra exalted slot. I guess I can attack with the, yeah, that's fine. The only thing I'm really like a little bit worried about is endurance on their side, but I think that's fine. All right, this says haste, so let's just use it to eat knight and pass back. Interesting. I will block and then before damage just eat that uh, horizon canopy. And then yield. But I do need to play a little bit faster here. Sweet game one. This is the magic that I love. Maybe not with the timer, but otherwise like just grindy creature based magic. Swords on ooze. Okay, there goes my big threat. Can we find another? Um, return One, two, three, return. I'm actually happy just to six here and then do most of my stuff in end step. Um, Remanap's going to be fine. They will get back a fetch land here if they really want it. No attacks. One, two, three. Punishing five. Thalia. Return. Let's take out. Goblin. 
Could have also used the refl yeah the reflections there, like just little things here that's being affected by time. I mean, I could also like not play the Dried Arbor and play a land that I can tap to actually get the extra uh, like damage through of Endurance. Swords is pretty nice. One, two, return. Mission fire. Return. Mission fire. I just realized we're at 17 life as well, so I could probably be taking a few of those cards at the library. Okay. Pretty happy just to Swords Thalia here. Uh, endurance doesn't shuffle, that's a big thing. It only puts the cards to the bottom of the deck. But it would be pretty cool if you could shuffle with it. Okay, definitely playing a fetch land here. Probably shouldn't be targeting them either because we do just not want to give them access to dried up but because we have so many answers to it it doesn't really matter machine fire this return yes punishing fire this they have one card look if they have endurance they have endurance Happy to take them off flat. And then just six. A lot of mana for Maverick, for, uh, for Joe this game. It's pretty tough. The tough thing for me is, is that we don't have too much to bring in. Like, I don't mind the, the mountain over Gadoteague. The Collect Oof can also come out potentially like a, a Forcer Vigor, but not too much here to be looking at. The tough thing is, is that it's such a grindy deck that now we probably want to rely on Minsk and Boo to close this out for a quick game two. But you never know. I don't think Surgical's worth it. The Blast, of course, like, all of the combo stuff isn't. I think, like, one of these is there. One of the, the Porter Vigors is fine, but it, it could be irrelevant. Like, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe Oof is just better as a creature. Like, we do have the Knight of Autumn if we really need it. We have the Prismatic Endings if we really need to deal with any Force of Vigor targets, so... 
I'd probably rather have the creature as a 2-2 vanilla card than just a dead Force of Vigor. and win this um i don't mind it it has a lot of early interaction it has a nice threat and then it does have the mint score ready which is sweet pretty happy just to hmm Prismatic ending this. We don't have a great answer to Sylvan Library, but that's if they're on Sylvan Library. There's also a world where I fetch up Dried Arbor with this Windswept Teeth. Safekeeper, that does change things. I did go up to their turn, la up their mana last turn, but I think here I just want to hold the swords for their first threat. That first prismatic inning was kind of a mana check, but it looks like their mana is actually not too bad. I do want to stop here, but I didn't put in a stop. Yeah, that's my bad. I guess we take two. That's on me. I'll get plateau because it turns on all my colors. They try to swords here, I'm happy to keep the knight. Maybe not. Guess we'll see. Or if this is dancer, that's pretty tough. Yeah. Hmm, that's gonna be five. Is it in the air? Trample, lifeline case. No. Okay, that's actually pretty sweet. Oh, that's a great draw. Hold up sword to see if they just attack with the Fleetwood for five. No lands in the bin just yet, which is nice. Wasteland's okay. Okay, now we have to sort this. Ah, uh, but now see, we get the free one. So now we just get to save the safekeeper with the land that we're going to wasteland anyway, which is really nice. And this Minsk might just run away with the game now.
I'm not too sure what the role of this wasteland is. Maybe it's to take my opponent off it. I'm kind of thinking about Caracas. Like, I don't want to be using Savekeeper every turn to deal with Caracas. Like, they could potentially have Questing Beast, but we have a pretty good plan for that because they have to tap up the Wasteland to Green Suns for it. But they are playing the Fleet Dancer, so I assume they're playing those over the Questing Beast. But, as I said, like, this game really came down to Minsk and we had it, and the mana got there to cast it, and now it's just doing Minsk things. Uh, I think here we attempt to save this. This from like another spell. Just because it's already so big, I kind of need it as a 7 7, even though we get another one every turn. And it is free to some extent. Okay. Knight's fine. No attacks. Okay. Yeah, just swing and throw, which is nice. Um, I'm pretty happy to use... Kind of a free attack, I guess. Hey, Jair. Welcome. Hope you're well. Oof. It's funny how much of this just looks like Nia Depths versus Nia Depths. Go for the eyes, boo. Yeah, I really like uh, Joe testing out Fleetwood for sure. Nice. Very cool. Oh, oh, okay. Miller, Crafty Companion. Whenever an opponent attacks one or more Planeswalkers you control, put a loyalty counter on each Planeswalker you control. That's cool, so it's kind of like a neg one effect. Whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, you may draw a card. Okay, that's pretty sweet. And then the other half is Luca, six mana. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. If a creature card was discarded this way, draw two cards. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Pretty sweet. You get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power. Pretty sweet with the... um. Goblins as well for getting all those things, but yeah, tough one for Joe there. Obviously there he was very uh he lacked white mana. But we're back into it already. And <laughs> we're up against Baku. Um with a fine hand. With a fine hand. Pretty happy to keep this. Turn one ignoble, turn two screws, and wasteland or sword. Pretty much a six with the dried upper, but happy to go there. I went and played my Naya Initiative Stompy deck with Moloch last night. I've got to say, unless my opponent is on Delva, Moloch was super underwhelming. Yeah, that's fair enough. Like, uh, it it is a pretty specific card. 
Um, so knowing your local metagame definitely helps. And it could be a, a good sideboard card um, as just a, a removal spell to find through green suns. Because if, if your opponents are playing creatures, then it is pretty tough to uh, to get there, I will say. Okay. Cool. Um. Hmm. I don't really want to play out the ooze just yet. But I don't mind green sunning for another mana dork here. Um, probably just off a Tega. I kind of want my white source though. So I might just get another Savannah. And then just get another Ignobled. Oh, we only run the one Ignobled. Okay, that changes things a little bit. Hmm. See if they allow this. It's tough that we can't like Wasteland and then Green Suns for Dried Arbor. That's definitely the, the better play here, but we're playing with what we got. Okay. Hey Joe. Yeah, for sure. That uh that was a pretty tough one. Especially game one. You had a, a nice start with a lot of good mana, but then just drew mana. You didn't really draw a whole lot to do with it. Which is pretty rough. And the library for us was quite nice with the ooze, because it just gave us a little bit of incremental life gain to draw an extra card here and there. And then having to deal with the ooze with the swords is, is just where it all kind of lines up. Um, I'm happy here to just play the ooze. Like, they've already used two bolts means next turn we can potentially make this a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Merc not too bad, to be honest. Oh, Teague's pretty cool. Um, ah, this is actually tough. So they've already used two dazes. I could play Teague to stop Force of Will, but then they can daze the sword. Um, I also have the line of just making this a 4-4 right now. I don't mind that. I guess, I guess we'll swords first. If they have force, they have force. Oh, they don't. Okay, well now we just get to eat bird and also attack this turn, which is pretty nice. Hmm. But I, I I did have power there to take it, take at least one hit. But having the 4-4 four, four ooze and also the most side off the table is huge. I didn't want to be in this spot where they could brainstorm into force of will. But, like, this ooze without a bounce spell allows us to control DRC. It obviously attacks through a Delver, which is really nice. It also allows us to control how many Merc Tides they can cast, if they can cast one. So there is a world where next turn I just hold up mana and attack with the, the ooze and potentially even the Dried Alba. Ooh, I should probably be thinking about on Holy Heat as well. Artifact, Instant Land, Sorcery. But even then, like, we have the Knight as a backup, which will be a 4-4 as well, which is nice. And hey, hey Mapson, very cool to see you. Hope you're well. 
We will find a time to stream. <laughs> we will find a time to stream. I'm still very, very keen. But I know you have a lot on your plate. Obviously no rush. Oh, they went for the Dryad Arbor. Interesting. Um, hmm. I think in this spot, I'm probably more happy to go up to their, their, uh, graveyard to keep a Merc off the board than anything else. They're trying to go after my mana, but if we have the Ooze on board, I could see a world where they have like Wasteland Petty Theft or something. That would be pretty annoying. Baku doesn't usually play Heat. Okay. Maybe there's a case at 21 Life just seeing if the library sticks. Okay. But, you know, there is a world where, like, we don't have an answer for Merktide, so we should be going up with the graveyard. Pyroblast to the bin. Makes sense. I get it. I think next turn, it's probably just a green source at the top that I'm looking for to take out three types. Probably just being like Bolt, Brainstorm, Ponder. Okay. Hmm. So if I attack, I block, I take out the Mishra's Bauble. Yeah, I can play, I, I can play around Bolt here because one plus three is four and we can eat Dried Arbor to make this a five, five. So we Gucci. No blocks. I think this Wasteland is better for me than being able to take my opponent off something. They have used two bolts. I guess three, yeah, that's very true. Get rid of a bolt. And then it's probably just going to be pass, holding up to eat the bauble to keep damage off the field. Instant, 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 instant. Oh, I could eat sorcery here. Okay, I don't mind that actually. Because it also is just one less they could like potentially Merc Tide second main for. Ugh. You got me. <laughs> um, all right, well. Battle begins. Hey, hi, Star. The tough part about Natural Order in Maverick, which I do love up here, is that, 
like El elves is just there as the natural order deck which is just so good at what it does and newton's also and a lot of the team is putting a lot of work into the deck just being obviously very very good at what it does um that it's becoming more of like a maverick shell with fiend artisan uh i actually am happy here to eat the dried arbor and tick things up a notch There is a world as well where I'm just relying on this wasteland to keep them off like expressive iteration into multiple spells instead of trying to get this knight onto the field. But yeah, I've seen some pretty cool like our uh, Bant um, natural order decks with the blue enchantment that allows you, is it opposition or oppression? That's it. Oh. I think at this stage as well, I'm also happy just to throw that Wasteland into one of these when they're on zero cards. I don't think the Wasteland for me is really doing much. It's really a case of trying to keep my opponent drawing into an out for the Scavenging Ooze. Well, they are going to block. That's kind of a big deal for us. Ah, puts creature into the bin. Okay. They do have that artifact, though. Aha. I think here we definitely attack without playing the land. Make them block with the Delver, potentially. I don't mind just getting forest here. Now they have to attack with both. So we just eat bauble. Oh, that's still four, isn't it? No, it's not. Awesome. Oof. Oh, there's no sorcery, of course. Oh, just to land and they play it. Interesting. Hmm. Um, okay, so now the question is, do we just hold up the blue? Because we can take them off Delirium again if they find sorcery. Because we can take them off Brainstorm. Like, does the extra damage do anything? I th I think I'm happy to attack and then see what happens. There's not too much difference. It's actually funny, because if they want to ponder first, they have to attack with everything. Um, okay, so here, I'm happy just to eat the Delver and just gain one, take one. Green sounds.
Hmm. I think here I'm just happy to eat the brainstorm. Like, them not attacking here is just so good for us. Oof. What do I want to do here? I could put another creature onto the table. Is that worth anything? Yeah, that's actually not too bad. Because I can get Birds of Paradise here, which could turn on Minsk next turn. Or just go for Safekeeper, which turns off uh, a Bounce spell. I think that's actually it. I think that's just better. Nice. Delver. Delver, Delver, Delver. Uh, the Minsks, the Teague, the Oof. Um, the Fables, I think, are just too slow. The Library is just a little bit too... The Library is always the, the interesting one. Uh, Night of Autumn, I can also see on the fringes. I definitely like the Four Blasts. Like, that's a pretty easy take. I really like the, the Mountain. I don't mind two, like, two chokes for two Fables. And then probably Night of Autumn. Library is always the, the awkward one, but... I think this is pretty decent. Fable's kind of cool, but I think just having some of these cards is better. Choke can be a bit of a trap. It's really about patience and just making sure you can land it when you're not just going to die to the swing back. But I think because post board you just have so much removal, you can really control the board in a way that you can cast Choke a little bit more aggressively than other versions of Maverick. And the mountain helps a lot. Like, having just the access to a, a basic mountain is sweet. Just don't have it in the opening hand, please. Um, uh, I don't mind this. The canopy's a little bit awkward, but otherwise... It's gonna be fine. Oh, they're playing tr a trot. Huh. I do just want to get rid of this. Wow. It makes me think they can ride this Delver to victory at least in the in the early game for that. It makes me think they have a wasteland because they think that we just won't find removal or get the mana in time to be able to deploy another removal spell. The force on a turn one threat also makes me think they have like a, a threat light hand. Like green suns here would be pretty sweet to go for. Oh, blast is actually pretty sweet. Um, I think holding up blast here, even though it puts us in the realm of getting wastelanded again. I think holding up blast here is just so strong. But there is an argument that like blast is our answer to Merc Tide. That there's no reason to put the Taiga here in front of a um So we know one card is bolt. I actually, I, I don't mind going after this and just keeping creatures off the field. Even though we have the Punishing Fires, there's no real way of knowing that that's going to resolve. Oh, okay. Oh, we know they have the Bolt, though. I wonder if we're getting close to just needing to insurance them away from Merktide. I think if they play a Fetch and Fetch straight away... Also another great card to hit with uh, Pyroblast, of course. Oh, 
Oh wow, that resolved. Didn't expect that. Minsk isn't too bad as we have the punishing fires. I think it's just going to be double punishing fire the Minsk. Okay, no second Minsk is quite nice. <laughs> huh. They're just gonna throw it? Okay. Uh, I think Knight is just past here, as it also gives us access to Caracas. But I don't think we're winning this game, so I think we can just concede that. Hmm. They're a boo deck. Doesn't change a whole lot other than kind of wanting Sylvan Library on the play over Knight of Autumn. Uh, I don't mind this end. A little bit slow, and like Wasteland and Choke don't go together that greatly, that well, but we do have swords and just mana on point, which is quite nice. It's pretty hard to throw this hand away against Elva. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Pretty happy to stay back on this choke for now and just hold up Pyro and Punishing Fire this turn.
This can get Tega, which means we can blast off the Windswept Teeth, which is really nice. Yeah, it's tough. I think we, the, the reason that I was patient there on the DRC is that we can play around days. And I think that could be a, a negative part of my game is that I just always respect days so much that if the sword there doesn't resolve and I don't know about the punishing fire, we don't have a removal spell for the, the DRC. And as we don't have a great turn two or turn three play, I'm happy to like have a days, an, an undazable swords to plashes as that play but obviously the incremental um value here is adds up but my plan here is to hopefully punishing fire drc probably just right now there's no real reason to wait And then next turn just slam the choke. Which is tough if they do have a creature on board. Having a big think about this. Cast an instant. Oh, okay, yeah. And then maybe put a creature into the bin as well. Hmm. Yeah, maybe they have, like, Force Brainstorm. And potentially they think instead of forcing pitching the Brainstorm, they could potentially... Uh, they're gonna let it slide, okay. Oh, nothing. I am getting the Tager out of the deck, so I might as well go and fetch it now. This choke really is just trying to keep Minsk off the board, because even if they have days for the Pyroblast, it puts them back a land drop. I could have also kept up the Tager here, and maybe even just cast the Noble Hierarch this turn instead of holding up the Blast, but I like holding up the Blast as well in case they have like Petty Theft to bounce it post-board, or post, uh, like, end of, end of turn. doesn't love a choke. Oh, it resolves. Alright. Hmm. 
I think this turn I'm happy to wasteland them, play Hierarch, hold up double blast, and then next turn play the Ramen up, play the Ramen up, and then get wasteland back. Uh, the question is, do I want to take them off green? I assume it's only for Minsk in this matchup. I assume they're not playing Goyf. The red means we can take them off being able to Lightning Bolt, the Noble, or even the Ramana. It, it's definitely tough, because if I'm only scared of Minsk, then... I don't really care about the trap. Yeah, I think red is just a little bit more relevant. How much would you love to see a petty theft here? With double blast, it's just gunning for it. No float. Okay, let's play noble. You don't often get to bully the Delver mana base. Typically it's us getting bullied, so this does feel kind of nice. Oh, they're going for Merktide? Um, I'm happy to blast one on the stack, and then if they force it, yeah, okay. Nice. We could just untap and then hit it on the field to play around days, which is pretty nice, but yeah, tough spot for them. Always nice to take down Delva, though. Yeah, Sylvan Library is a, a tough one because Sylvan Library can be really awkward when they have creatures in play and you top deck it. But there are post board games against Delva where there's a lot of one for one trades and then they just take over with, with expressive iteration. And Maverick just doesn't really have a way to keep up with that. That library can be okay there, but I think it's the awkward spot that keeps me from bringing it back in. Because like... The basics of it, typically from from my point of view, is I don't like library because they're typically so aggressive with their creatures and also bolts that by even just getting an extra card of the library, it can put you in a situation where you're just dead. And even though you're bringing in a lot of removal, which slows down the aggressiveness and gives you a bit more life to play with, there are still just spots that you don't have the luxury of playing around where they have creatures in play, you want to top deck removal, you top deck the library, and it's just like... Come on, like, that's not, that's not it. But yeah, big shout out to Paul for the uh, donation deck list. Uh, I believe Paul runs a store, which is pretty sweet. Let's move this over here. <laughs> Dave, for some reason I had Paul stuck in my head, but apologies to Dave. Um, his last name sounds a little bit like Paul, so I just said Paul stuck in my head, but Dave, a big thank you for the donation deck list. Uh, his store is the portal. That also got me there. But uh, yeah, uh, it's been pretty sweet. I've been playing Punishing Mav in paper as well um, and really enjoying it. Morlock's been pretty cool. I know Jeremy said before, Jeremy, Jer, said before that it can be a little bit awkward against non-creature decks, which is fair, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, a pretty cool card. Wouldn't mind trying it out as a, like, a, a one-of in, uh, in Nye, potentially, as just a, a nice removal spell through Green Sun Zenith. Just cast it for X equals five. There we go. Uh, on the play with an Okay hand, we have uh, Green Suns for Dried Arbor 
off a Taiga, but then if we lose it, we only have Cradle as backup. Hmm. We do have the Ramanap as a, a way to get both red and white. I could also go for, I think it's probably better to go for Savannah Dried Arbor. And have access to the sword if we lose. A, l a little bit risky, but I, 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 I don't mind it. Don't mind it. All right, opponents on seven as well. Let's go for Savannah. And let's go for Dried Arbor. I probably don't mind even using the Green Suns next turn for Ignoble Hierarch if we get there. Oh, ponder, 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 no! Does it matter? Come on now. Uh, I will get... Uh, I don't mind getting Savannah. It just gives us a little bit of insulation against Wasteland. And then I'll get Ignoble Tyrock here. I could see them forcing this, seeing they went after our uh, mana early on. No, okay. Ignobled. Okay. Sure. Maybe setting up the Delver. Chose to not shuffle. I don't think I have the luxury here of getting value off the Ramanap. Oof. Uh, so let's go with Cradle first. Ramanap. Attack for one. Ponder's okay. The reasoning for playing the Ramanap is that it might be a bolt target, which takes it away from our only red source in the Ignoble Hierarch. I want to save the swords for a Merc Tide. We have the Punishing Fire for a Delver, which kills both sides. So I didn't really see too much pressure on dealing with the Delver right now. And I think the value of being able to untap with a Ramanap might just be good enough. Hey Capo, welcome. Yeah, I do need to get better at uh, YouTube exclusive content, especially. There is a uh, editing software called Time Bolt that I did try to use, um, and should really put some some time into it because MTGO pauses do sometimes last a long time, and for someone watching on YouTube, it's not a great UX. 
but thanks for checking in. Very cool to see you here live in chat. You can also update the store. Next turn, best case, we get to play Minsk. Well, they chose to shuffle, which is quite nice. Ooh. Land. Now, this is an interesting setup. I don't mind uh, not playing the Minsk into a potential Lightning Bolt. However, I, I feel like if my opponent had Bolt, they would have gone after the Ramanap. Oh, hey, Alex. <laughs> Too good. Uh, Creole next week actually sounds very good. I would love that. And some pauper. Yes. Yeah, I feel like if, if they had the bolt, they would have bolted the Ram Ramanap, but potentially they just want to bolt anything that gets in the way of the insect, potentially. Like, I could play Minsky, but the safer line is probably just Knight and also Punishing Fire. I also might as well Punishing Fire right now, because it, if they have Force of Negation, they at least have to pitch a card. Might actually attack first. Also to note, if I source the plush as one of their creatures, I can get the Punishing Fire back. So if they do force this, not force of negation, but force of will, not too bad. Still a fair way away from losing to this Delver. Okay. Let's try Knight. It will be a 4-4, four -four, a 5-5 five -five with this fetch. Days. Are they running Stifle? Or maybe another daze? No. Maybe they just have double daze. Must be double daze. Okay. Surely that means Merc Titan Hand, which thankfully we do have the sword for. But I'm pretty happy about that. No. Wow. I guess they just didn't have an answer to the knight. Once it's on the field, they had to double daze it. Do they find a fetch land? Oh, they don't find a fetch land. Bubble's okay, they already have instant sorcery creature land in the bin. Ooh, wasteland. This is nice. I'm gonna see if they float red or not. Or they float nothing. Alright, you know what time it is. Kind of saw that coming, let's be honest. But now they're in trouble. They were brainstorm locked. Which is nice. <laughs> hey Enigma, welcome. And hello to Enigma's girlfriend. Hope you're both doing well. Okay. Oh, force, but no land drop. 
That means we get to Wasteland them again this turn. Just fill my wrath. I will play the Oof here because it is just extra mana and pressure. But obviously a pretty vanilla creature in this matchup. I guess it does stop Bauble, but they've already used one. Whew. Thank you, PV. Thank you. Okay, Bolt definitely a start. Based on Cradle's fine. Still a two turn clock with the uh, Collector Oof here, which is nice. Uh, I'm also not going to play this because if we draw into something like. Um, A three mana card that's really good in mono red. It allows you to loot. Babel bless you, thank you. Uh, I so I could swords the Delver here. They go to four. You get the punishing fire back. Like they probably don't have Merc Tide. If they did have Merc Tide, they would have Merc Tide then. So I think this is going to be fine. Punishing fire. Yeah, nice. Okay. And yeah, assuming, yeah, in a bolt, which is nice. Fable, thank you. Uh, Fables, Minsk, Library, Teague, Oof, potentially Night of Autumn. Uh, Blasts, Mountain, Chokes. I think this is it last time. I'm just going to keep the Knight of Autumn in the deck. I think that's fine. Even just the full life can be relevant. Especially when the deck is t usually dealing damage in multiples of three. It can be the difference between surviving one more turn. Hey, I'm, I'm glad I could continue it uh, while we were away, Mapson. But that was only game one. So every game has to be earned against Elba these days. Which can be pretty tough. Like, I feel like Maverick has a, a pretty decent matchup against Elba. You do have a lot of answers to their threats. It's just that lifelong case of having to draw the right side of the deck. But, yeah. Petty Theft is probably the card that I don't like the most. Petty Theft being able to bounce stuff is just... It's not fun. It's, it's so much better when you have like that large knight on the field. But then when they wasteland you, off the mana to cast it and then bounce it to your hand and you just have it rotting in your hand while you're getting beaten down by a 3-1. Come on now. Come on. Petty Theft is your favorite current Delver card? I think it's really cool design. I think that and Bone Crusher Giant are really cool. Uh, I think, just like Newton says, uh, Elvish Reclaimer is probably my favorite design in like... Probably the like my favorite fire design card. Um, but yeah, cool decks for sure. Cool cards for sure. Oh, to be fair, the amount of times, hey motor wagons, that a Delver player has aggressively gone up gone after my mox diamonds with petty theft and it's it's snowballed into a loss because of it is too high is way too high <laughs> it is uh, uh tilting isn't doesn't even describe the feeling of the card they most likely have for dark depths hitting your mox diamonds and you being like wow i actually don't have my colors now or uh similar uh, this hand is pretty good. We have once to find another green source. We have Prismatic Ending as early interaction. 
like the the endurance is obviously great as well i don't mind a bolt just going at the silver library either okay i'm happy to cast this first like we don't really need the mana now so if they daze this that's kind of a win because then that's one less daze they have for the prismatic ending okay so what do we have we have access to double green double white one red that's pretty much everything we don't really need another land here i wouldn't mind ooze potentially especially if the safekeeper is most likely going to the bin this is getting exiled hmm Knight's going to be a 2-2 for a little while with this hand. It could be a 4-4 if we want to like aggressively wasteland ourselves. Or if the Sylvan Library, Sylvan Safekeeper sticks around. E-E-O, too good. Too good. Hope you're enjoying the World Cup. It's been pretty cool. Cool to see, uh, I believe it was Saudi Arabia beat Argentina, which is just insane. Uh, I don't really want another 3-drop. I am just going to go with the Ooze. Um, and then I'm happy to... Huh. I always have a feeling that I really want to wasteland opponents who start on Delva. But it's obviously quite poor as well because they actually just are ahead on board. But there is a lot of greedy Delva players out there. Japan beat Germany? Wow. Yeah, Aussies did pretty well. Like, uh, goal in the first 10 is pretty awesome. Uh, but France, obviously, a pretty class team. So that's uh, always pretty tough to to go about. But yeah, I always love seeing upsets at World Cups. The uh, Rugby World Cup next year in France should be really good because a lot of the teams are very, very close. Surgical, okay. I definitely don't mind seeing Surgical in this matchup. Hmm. Nobody talking about the real upset. The real upset. Marco Carosa, nil all. Nuts. Um, okay. Quick look. I honestly don't mind Wasteland. They didn't brainstorm a ponder here, which is interesting. They didn't cast a one mana creature either. It has to be brainstorm? I don't want to cast the ooze until I have creatures in the bin to eat. So safekeeper this turn. Next turn I don't mind playing the ooze by playing the mountain. But there's also a world where the roll of the wasteland is really just for me to play around days on this endurance. The big question here is, is did they get Brainstorm locked on that Brainstorm? They did not. They don't have another threat, which is huge for us. Especially with that draw. The, the relevancy of the Red Blast here as well is that it is a way to deal with Delva by killing it to put it in the bin 
the ooze rather than exiling it. They probably get their steam vents here if they're just going to fetch. And I, I think I'm happy to take one more swing if they do nothing uh, in their first main phase. Hmm. I mean, life is also a resource here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a world where the Delver gives them an extra card for Murktide as well. Wasteland. Guess then we blast this. And then we flow to green. And then try to protect this bad boy. Nice. Hmm. Hey, Debinder, welcome. Hope you're well. I think because we have the swords, I'm not inclined to like aggressively use this endurance, so... I'm actually just going to run out once we get a savannah here. We have one left in the deck. And just play this ooze. They might be wanting to surgical here. Bolt on this. Hmm. That's actually fine. I think that Safekeeper's kind of done its, done its job. Surely that means they have another removal spell. Not oh, just a Merc Tide. Ho, 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 ho. Did someone say, can we run hot? I think someone said, can we run hot? <laughs> Take it. Take it. I'll eat your Delva. Look, I think if the phrase better lucky than good was ever used on this channel, it's pretty there. Oh, I could have, of course, yeah, I could of course blast the Merc Tide. That's very true. Yeah, that that's actually a great play. Um, I th think here I'm actually happy to cast the Noble in attack because then if they want to bolt the Scoos on our turn, they have to result they have to do it in response to Exalted, but then we just can eat in response anyway. But yeah, it's actually a great. We should have just yeah blasted the the Merc Tide. Let's be honest. Okay. Save keeper. Nice. So now we're really in control. We get to play this endurance around uh. Merc Tide. Yeah. Thanks, PV. It was all the hype. Exactly. Sometimes you just get caught up in the hype. I've never got gotten tunnel vision before. That doesn't happen. Uh, just making sure there's no more creatures. Yep. Fetch out the island. Uh, 
I think here I'm happy to... Ugh. <laughs> Endurance. Yeah, I could have blasted for sure. That's a... Yeah, tough one for them. I think blast there on the Merc Tide is probably better. I mean, in any case, it is better. 100%. Swords the Merc Tide to draw out the counter magic when they counter use the blast on the Merc Tide so they gain no life off the swords. Yeah. Tough. But I I think sometimes I also have to make those mistakes so that next time it comes up, I don't make it again. It's probably the, the best way to learn those sort of interactions is to make is, is to really get it wrong. And then don't get it wrong again. But hey, Dave, deck's going well. Yeah, exactly. I think um, MTGO especially is a great place to learn about your mistakes. And one thing that I should do more of and actually start doing is re-watching some of my games. Because with a, a clear mind and without chat, without music, without everything, you can really like just put games in front of you and, and little choices and say, maybe this is actually the better line. Or knowing that my opponent had this, I could have played around it, so we should have done this instead. Things like that. But the four blasts have been really nice against Delva. Especially for a deck that can't sort of ponder or brainstorm into them. You just want to be able to hit them nice and hard. Hunting Jonason. Yurion. This is a one lander with an ignobled, but with a really high curve, but I'm happy just to mulligan. Uh, this is much better. I'm happy to keep this. And I think I'm going to bottom the forest here and keep the once. Because if we draw a third land, then I can just use the once to find another threat. Alright, so we're up against the Yurion deck that is playing Snow Covered Basics. Start with this. Find a Windswept Heath. Nice. Play this. Fetch for Savannah. Play Noble. Ah, this could also be a Cephalid Breakfast, which I should probably be weary of. Elephal Strix, okay. Huh. I think in that case I'm happy to go for Fable here overnight. If I draw a land here, I'm pretty happy just to multi lands up the bottom. I wonder if they get basic island, uh, basic planes here and play to fairy bouncing the goblin. Plague. Okay. Happy to get rid of these two. Okay. Hmm. I'm pretty happy to attack with the shaman here and get the mana. Then probably just play mints can tick up.
Uh, let's go for Tega and then just cast the Minsk. I could see this build without Cradle. You don't have too much to put into it. It is kind of nice with Ooze. Uh, and just being able to double spell sometimes with Endurance, which is pretty cool. But I wouldn't say it's as necessary as some of the other decks that I've seen. Caracas is really nice there. We just tick this up and then play the knight. Pretty happy just to hold cracks up here for the Venter, and then also hold up draw a card with the canopy. I wonder if they find Soul Herder here, or if they go for something else. This is going to be a really grindy matchup, so having all the time, having more time is obviously better. Solitude. Pretty happy to return this. Uh, I could actually trade it with the Goblin. I actually don't mind that trade. Come 
one wasteland. Pretty good. I have played against zero initiative decks so far. Punishing fire. Okay. I'm going to get rid of Teague here. Okay. So we know one card in hand is Solitude. Take out the Caracas. Tick up boo. Plus. Yeah, uh, I know the initiative cards online are pretty expensive. Uh, in paper, I played against it a little bit. Um, but yeah. Obviously, PV took down a challenge with the deck, which is very cool to see. I've seen a lot of players doing pretty well with it. Especially like Jason Murray and uh, XJ as well. They attack Minsk with both. It's pretty nice for us. Strix is fine. I wonder if they, yeah, try to do the prince here but thankfully we just get to punishing fire the plague engineer here before the uh one one comes into play probably just tapping these two Okay. Honestly, I think he would just hold back the boo. Maybe not. Maybe I do want to attack here. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think just because I don't really want to block the Charming Prince with uh, that, that I'm happy just to pass for one more turn. I wonder what they get here. Potentially another Baleful Strix. Choose for the two mana. I shouldn't only play one Charming Prince. Could be Soul Herder. Could be a Solitude. Yeah, 
have one card left. Skyclave. Okay. Two cards, one is Skyclave. I'm going to cast a Gilded Drake. Okay. Take that. Sure. I think in this case I'm supposed to Caracas the Boo now so that they have to sacrifice the Gilded Drake. Because I know with like other Charming Princes they can make use of this Gilded Drake a few times. Caracas after. Hey Mark, welcome. Hope you're well. Interesting. Because now I just get a free 3 3. Knight. What do I want to do here? I think it's just go for Boo. Yeah, so we know they have Skyclave. Probably could have also attacked with a knight there. Hmm. Oh, what if we go for one, two, three, play knight? Yeah, my bad. I should have played that pre-combat and then attacked with the knight as well. I was going to get our grove to get back punishing fire, but now I'm happy to get safekeeper. Just to give some of our creatures a little bit of uh, protection. Ooh, copying drakes? Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Especially taking the baleful strix. Yeah, really tough time for them. Uh, okay... I don't want the Teague in this matchup. They're probably still playing Vile, but I probably don't care about it as much. And so Collect Oof can come out. I do like some amount of Blasts. Um, I don't mind a choke. I don't mind a Force of Vigor. But potentially don't need the Force of Vigor. I do like the Mountain. Um, Wances, Library, Scoos. I could see some Endurance coming out. Fables are still sweet. Track insurance force collective. Yeah. Like the I think we're just we we grind pretty well. It's just the ETB effects that are so good for them. Hey Ramar, welcome. Hope you're well. What do we have we have a lot of early removal but obviously just the once for mana so pretty happy to mulligan this uh we have the taiga and a once i'm pretty happy to keep this i'm gonna bottom one blast effect i think double swords is better than double blast 
Okay. Land. Close. Cast this. Nice. Uh, let's go for the fetch land. And then fetch for Savannah. Um, I'm going to play the Windswept here and attack for one. We can still hold up Swords and Pyroblast. We can fetch for Dried Arbor if we really need to, like if they tap out for a Teferi and try to bounce the Ignobled. Yeah, it's a shame, Mark, you don't get to test with Morlock in online. It's a big bummer. Um, I th think I'm happy to allow this, but they did just fetch and brainstorm. Yeah. We're just going to be fine. Palace Jailer. Huh. Um, that kind of makes me want to go with... Swords on Recruiter and Fetch for Dryad Arbor. Just to have multiple threats in play. Uh, this is the tough one because I kind of want to hold up Pyroblast here for Force of Will. But I also want to get value off the Ramen up straight away. But I think I'd rather play the Windswept Heath because it can get Plateau, which allows me to cast both Pyroblast and Swords. So I think that's better. Nice. Get that Plateau. That's definitely a position where I think it's more important to protect the Remin app with cards in hand than get the value off it from, obviously, the graveyard. Like, now they definitely can't tap out for Palace Jailer. That's fine. Wow, Solitude pitching this. On ETBs, you gain two life and scry two whenever your opponent casts a toy's opponent except one type of return. Huh. Minsk. Oof, close. That's actually pretty sweet. Now we're in a little bit of a tough spot with our Plague Engineer because there's no great attacks.
Like, imagine if we had, like, insurance here. Maybe the flash of insurance is just worth it. Happy to take out this because the Baleful Strix is a little bit easier to answer potentially. It also just trades with the Dried Arbor, which isn't too bad for us. Not the swords. Minsk. Oh, so close. Uh, what are we getting? Probably just Night of Autumn here, I think. Night of Autumn deals with this as well. I think I should put the Charming Prince face up and then these two cards face down. Hmm, yeah. And hope they take these two. But this with this is pretty good. They take the Charming Prince, okay. Come on, outs. Yeah! <laughs> what a play <laughs> and we get the punishing fire back oh we drew the punishing fire okay huge straw <laughs> uh, Like, like, Charming Prince now, they know about the Punishing Fire, which isn't a great blocker, like, we're keeping this. We are keeping this for a long time, hopefully. Two bottom. Okay. Playing engineer? Yori into hand. Okay. Happy just to... Punishing for this now. Choke? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm having fun. Are you guys having fun?
Hmm. It's going to be tough for them. Like, we know about Yorion. Gilded Drake. Okay. Okay. Nice. Oh, but it comes in tapped. I didn't think of that. Now what? Can they Yuri on the Gilded Drake? Can't Yuri on Drake? Yeah. Okay, so luckily we can return Punishing Fire here. Seven, ten, seven, eight, nine, return. I think you would just attack with everything. Could attack with just a five, five, and then hold these back. If I attack with everything, if they block here, we get a punishing fire, Yurion. If they block Knight, they take seven and then punishing fire finishes them off because they go to eight but then oh sorry they go to four but then we deal four with punishing fire if they block the gilded drake they take six and then it's a little bit awkward but then we do have endurance as well as punishing fire on the urion so i think here i'm actually happy to attack with everything Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. It's nearly 1 a.m. And I need to go to bed. But we have a match left. And look, we're 4 0. So we could go for the trophy here, which is pretty sweet. Deck's been really nice. Deck has been uh, very fortunate and kind to us, I will say. The top of deck has the top of the deck has been uh, pretty great, which is nice to see. Yeah, just a game, which is pretty nice. Um, the consistency of the deck has been quite good. I will say that. Yeah, big shout out to Dave, um, who wants to play Eternal Weekend, wants to play uh, Maverick. Uh, he obviously knows that Nia Daps is in a really good spot, but. He wants to see what Mav is like, and this is the list that he wanted to play. Um, probably with Morlock. I think Morlock's pretty nice. Um, but, yeah, it's been sweet. I think the only thing I thought of was potentially another Mana Dork, just because you do have such a high uh, number of um, three jobs. But there's been a few times where just Fable making the, the Goblin token, creature that makes the tokens to sack for mana, has been really nice. So that's been pretty awesome. Obviously, like, the four blasts as well just make, like, Delva so much better, even though we already have, I would say, a pretty great matchup. I would say it's, like, 60-40 if you draw the right side, and then closer to 50-50, if not. Alright, Lightwalker. 
Oh, I didn't record this. I didn't hit record. Uh, that's all good. We have the stream one to uh, export. Uh, look. I don't mind this double once. A little bit light on actual removal, but... Oh, goblins. Okay, we're up against Painter. Oh, that's pretty nice. Uh, I'm probably... Ha oh, oh, okay. Nice. Fable's really nice for them here. Oh, the green suns. Um. Hmm. So here I have some options. We can once for another land, hopefully hit a green source, then green suns for dried arbor. I could also take them off the goblin shaman if I really wanted to with prismatic ending. I don't mind going after the welder though. Hmm. I think I definitely want to build up my mana. And I think it's going to be green suns for dried arbor. And then prismatic ending on the welder. But hitting the shaman's pretty interesting as well. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's time for mana. Rexine Dragon Engine, Double Strike, Dragon Engine, Battlefield. Wow, okay. <laughs> Let's just bring this up again. Man, okay. Another Fable. Nice. Okay. Interesting spot. I, I don't mind Green Suns for Safekeeper and then play Oof. Just to make sure we do have a way to... Uh keep like lightning bolt away from oof and then also the goblin shamans aren't that great because the treasure tokens can no longer be used but they do get to go wide with the fables which is pretty tough i could also see just going for green suns here for knight of autumn to get rid of the fable here No discard. So now it's not doing too much either, so... Oh, do they, do they get to unearth this? They have to discard their hand, though, to draw three. Hmm. I think he would just want to once for Wasteland and then play Oof. Oof. 
Okay, Cradle's not the worst. Cradle allows us to go collect Oof potentially into Remnap. Now they probably have access to Pyroblast. Yeah. Interesting. Ah, oh, this isn't online. Okay. They have zero cards in hand. So you're going to use the engineer to get back. Yeah, okay. It's pretty good. Okay. Hmm. Start with drawing a card. And then we can replay the canopy here. It's tough because they, they get Grindstone off this next turn and I can't deal with the Painters. There's no way for me to Green Suns for Endurance to put the Oof back into my deck and then Green Suns for it again. So close. I think I just have to try to draw again. See what we drew into. Oh, okay. Oh, we did it. We did it. We can endurance ourselves. Got to play to your outs. And then with one floating. Can green suns. With the collector oof. I should have returned. Oh no, it doesn't matter. Uh, what do you mean that it only buys one turn? What am I missing? The Endurance only buys a turn, because you can put everything to the, back into your deck. They're gonna make a dude. Makes sense. Cranston.
Hey, Jib. Not too sure who Lightwalker is. I assume they're a well-known painter player? Post board, we have some cool cards. We have the, the forces, which are quite nice. Oh, we'll make a token of that and then start attacking. That's pretty good. A 2-2? Two, two? Okay. They're on YouTube? Okay, cool. This will be 10. I kind of feel we're at the situation where I have to block with the Ramen app. The Ramen app's not doing a whole lot anyway. But they will get to weld it back, so... I'm just going to actually take this. Yeah. Okay. Sadly, I can't buy this back. Just have to play this out. But now I do have Dried Arbor on the Construct as just a blocker. Yeah, the old treasure and uh, an oof combo. Hmm. Ugh. Right. Uh, I like the forces. I like the Surgicals, especially with Welders. I don't like the Plan of Blasts. I don't think Deafening Silence is worth it either. Um, Teague I don't mind dropping. The Minsks are just really nice. Uh, the Caracas I can see coming out. The safekeeper I really like to protect the the oof. Durances are nice, the knights are nice, the ramen ups are nice. Fables are nice. I could see like just a, a drop of like one fable, one minsk. Ooze is still pretty good. Ramen up. Couldn't be like one down on this and then one up on Minsk. Yeah. Surgical's pretty good if they're not playing Khan, yeah. I think this might just be how I go. Just nice to have a little bit of interaction in Surgical. Um, ooh, yeah, pretty happy to keep this. Pretty nice hand when you look at it. Like, we have hopefully two lands. Turn two, Collector Oof, Force, and Green card as well. I know it went to six. All right, let's get Savannah. Play Savannah. Play Noble. I could aggressively force this, but I'm pretty happy allowing it for now.
Um. Hold up, deck. Hold up. I think I do still want to go for Collector Oof here. The other plan is Safe Keeper, but I think just getting two threats in a row is better. So like Oof now and then Knight next turn. We can also hard cast Force next turn, so that's pretty sweet. Baseline off the top. The green suns. Here I'm pretty happy just to hold up Hardcast Force in end step. They make the token. Now we get to fetch. Probably just get Tay. Ah, oh, I might get Plateau. It gives me access to all my colors even if we lose the Noble. We have double white. And then force these two bad boys. Yes. Okay, we can Green Suns for Knight of Autumn to hit that. Don't you dare warping whale me. <laughs> Knight of Autumn. Destroy this. Next turn, I think we're just going to be one thing for a wasteland. Minsk? Grove. Yeah, okay, let's start with once. Wasteland, perfect. Uh, I will attack with both. We have swords as well if they have some sort of colorless flash blocker. But pretty. Uh, do I care? I'd probably rather hold the Wasteland for another Saga, potentially. What does Saga do? I could also try to Green Suns for... Maybe they're trying to combo me off in one turn. Like, I could also just Green Suns here for Safekeeper. do like a like making them pay life is good like it turns it into a one turn clock so i don't hmm i kind of want to hold up sword though could save keeper and wasteland and then it's pretty hard for them to go off from there I mean, this is the real start you need, like, turn one Matter Accelerant, turn two Collector Oof, turn three Force of Vigor, turn four Night of Autumn, and just keep it going. So, luckily got pretty, yeah, lucky there. Right, the big one coming. Honestly, I think I'm pretty happy just running this back. No real changes. This is a one lander, but I think this is a one lander I'm happy to keep. Especially with so much cheap interaction and mana acceleration.
Hmm. Is that too aggressive? I kind of like ending on this. Well, we can see what they discard as well, because we might be able to surgical something. Mm, not worth it. <laughs> Okay, now I'm keen to see what they get. Hmm. Uh, I still don't have to do anything because we have Scooze this turn as well with a land. Huge. Yeah, so I, I definitely could surgical something out. We do have double wave interaction, which is nice. So if we start by scavenging ooze on this, they can then target it. We can then target it again. So I kind of hope they start the interaction. But yeah, I think potentially, yeah, going with the, the surgical first just allows us not to have that mind game. Especially at 10 past, 10 past 1 in the morning. <laughs> okay. So I do want to use my mana here. So we start on, on this. They target it. We target it. They target it. We surgical it. I don't mind that. Oh, they also have to sacrifice an artifact. Okay, so they have to sacrifice this. Bolt on this. Hmm. I think now we just have to go after this or else they get to draw three. Ah, oh, but then they have, yeah. I think I should have targeted the Painter's Servant again, to be honest. Oh, but now they have nothing to actually get it back with. So I think here we're actually safe to get this. Now 
They have a pyroblast in hand, okay. They do have furies, which is really terrifying. I'm just gonna take a photo of this. Get rid of this. Okay. Nothing too different, like four fury. Okay. This dies. Oh, then we oot. Okay, so they just have Pyroblast in hand. Hmm. Is it just night time? They have Pyroblast. Maybe not. Maybe it is just one for one force this. I think it is one for one force this. Just so they don't get another copy of this to put something in the bin and then go from there. No attacks. Okay, interesting. I think library here is just too good not to play. I'm going to hold up like I have Source of Plowshares as well. Nothing from them. Oh. Oh. I didn't want to attack there because I wanted to act like I had swords to plashes. Can I go to eight? I think I can. I'm not going to punish him by this turn anyway. Too bad, that's one bolt less going to the face. Pretty happy just to take this next time I get a play knight and also hold up punishing fire. Ooh, cradle? Um doesn't change things. Put on top, put on top.
Now they're in a really tough spot. Land. It is five mana for Fury. Is it worth it to go to five? Like, what if they have double bolt? What if they have double bolt? I think here we're still good if we punishing fire this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Use Knight to find Grove. I could do that as well. I also like they're at ten, so we get to. I guess they go to eleven. And also fling the knight, that's true. Oh, we do it. Nice. Very cool. I haven't trophied in a little while, so that feels really nice. Ooh, it is late. It is late, but hey, we get there. Which is really cool. Really cool to finish it off. And get it. Delver twice. Esper Vile, I'm going to say. Uh, Painter. And one more, one more, one more. Very, very cool. That is very sweet. Nice. And I'm glad that I could do it with all of you guys here. So good. Um, a huge shout out to Dave for the list. Really, really nice to play. Um, nothing really... Yeah, really cool to see Mab with the trophy. Nothing really to say. Fable's probably the one that I'm not too sure on. Um... It is, it is pretty good, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough one, but very, very cool. Um, yes. Yeah. Honestly, let's go back to deck tech. Um, yeah, deck, deck was sweet. Like I, I really like the mountain. I think it's a pretty huge consideration being a sideboard slot, but having the mountain in the 75 is just really nice against some of the decks that you wanted against. Like you want the punishing fires against, you know, Death and Taxes, you want the Pyroblasts uh, against Delver. Um, being able to have like a red source that can't be interacted with Wasteland is really strong, so big fan of it there. Um, but hey, we got the trophy, which is really cool. Um, that's going to be me. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. A big thank you to the new followers and the new subs, and of course the resubs. If you guys want to find me on YouTube, you can find me here. Want to find me on Twitter? Hey, guess what? I'm there while it's still alive. Um... I'll be back probably on Sunday Arvo. I've got a Maverick Joe deck to get through, which is cool. It is an Abzan take on Depths, I believe. Uh, and then also want to go through a league with Punishing Mav with uh, Fleet Dancer. Fleetwood Dancer, I think it's called, uh, which is pretty cool as well. So see you guys there. I am going to see who else is streaming and send you over there. It looks like Jarvis is up. Nice. He's also playing Legacy, which is sweet. Um, so pretty happy to send you guys over there, but Hey, thanks once again. I really appreciate all of you and, uh, yeah. Enjoy, uh, always pulling on the Maverick hat and then giving it a whirl. So, uh, enjoy and, uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.